So, ladies and gentlemen, we got all of these functions going through. And I, we, if you can see, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We're talking about eight functions so far in this course. And I just have one last function to go through. All right? So, the last function that we're going to deal with is actually going to kind of go back to our original function. If you guys remember, we talked about um, b, uh, b to the x and log base b of x. We talked about those being reciprocals of each other. Do you guys kind of remember? We talked about remember reciprocals, swap x and y. That's how I showed you what the meaning of a logarithm was. Well, guess what? Our final function is the reciprocal of our identity function. So it takes the form of this f of x equals 1 over x. And since it takes the reciprocal of our original function, it actually takes the name the reciprocal function. All right? So this is what we're going to be calling the reciprocal function. Now, there's a couple characteristics that I'm going to get in much more detail about, but I just want to kind of go over the main tenets of what this first function looks like and then um, what are kind of some attributes of the domain and range. So this function looks like this. All right, it's not continuous. You can see there's actually two kind of two continuous parts to it. All right, and the important thing about this function is um, one, there's a couple values that are undefined. Right? We talked about the square root, square root function. All right, we know the square root function. You can't evaluate the square root of a negative number, right? That's an undefined value. You cannot take the square root of a negative number. Right? We talked about that. Um, we also figured out over here, you can't raise a number to a power and make it negative. Therefore, our range was restricted. You can't have any negative numbers. So now when I go and look at this, I look at this and I say, all right, well, looks like there's a restriction on there. And there's two restrictions. And how we're going to represent those restrictions, which we'll get into further, we'll talk about this more, is going to be called what we call our asymptotes. All right, because what you guys need to notice, and what I want you guys to understand about this reciprocal function, is the graph never crosses these two asymptotes. What they actually do is approach them. All right, and we'll talk more about asymptotes in a second. But what I want you guys to understand is, at these dotted lines, which we call asymptotes, our function is undefined. Just like our function for a logarithm is undefined for x values that are negative. All right. Just like for the square root, our values are it, our function is undefined for negative values of x. Here, our function is undefined for when our value equals zero. And let's see, would that make sense? Can I define one divided by zero? No, it's undefined, right? And we'll talk a little bit more about the horizontal asymptote. But I just want you guys to understand how is this going to affect our domain and range? Well, if we look at our domain. All right. Remember, domain is a set of all x values that you can evaluate. Meaning, I can plug in any number in for x, right? Any number. It doesn't matter how small that is. 1 over negative 1,000. And I can put in one, 1 over 1 million. I can still value it. But there's one value I cannot plug in for x, which is 0. So our domain is all real numbers except x cannot equal 0. All right, so this is unlike any other function that we've had. All the other functions, we were to say, hey, it had to be greater than 0, or oh, it's all real numbers. Now, for this function, we have a function that's only not evaluated at one certain value. And this is also going to be the case for our range. The range, you guys notice, is also up to infinity and down to negative infinity, but we do not have a value at 0. So our function, because what it's saying is you can't take 1, divide it by a number, and get 0. It's impossible. Try to take the number 1, divide it by a number to get 0. It's just not going to happen. So our range is all real numbers, except y cannot equal 0. All right. So this will complete now our family of functions for a course. All right. And we'll talk a little bit more about these. I'll, I'll go into it. Oh, wait a minute. I'm sorry. One last thing. We talked about these transformations, right? Where does the ax and h go? So our function for this is going to be f of x equals a times 1 over x minus h plus k. You guys want to want to write that one down. 
that's going to be a big one. Okay. So that's it. Wow.